Thanks to your generous donations to our Kickstarter funding campaign, Clive Barker Podcast presents Fundraiser 3. Hell on Earth. So um I got so I got the movie paused right before the artisan entertainment. I have the word artisan on the screen. Okay. Which is like three seconds in, I guess. Okay, I'm at three seconds in, it's on the screen too. Yeah, I just I just couldn't pause it fast enough to do it before then, okay. but all right, so this is going to be funny. Okay. There, there's some funny yeah. stuff that I found out about this and, and the, the Playmate and all that stuff. So Yeah, and so just for people listening, this is Candyman 3 audio commentary. Um, Day of the Dead. Yeah, Day of the Dead. As usual, it's me. Say that with uh, such jo- enthusiasm, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As usual, it's me, Jose, Ryan, and Rob. So another one of the Kickstarter uh, stretch goals that we had was Candyman 3 commentary track. Yep, so, and, and uh, anybody who makes it all the way through this movie should get a prize. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too bad. I mean, I've seen worse. It's not a, I wouldn't call it a good movie, though. I mean, yeah, well, let's get it started. And okay. We'll, who, yeah. Rob, do you want to do the countdown? Yeah, I've not done the countdown yet. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one, unpause. Okay, so Artisan Entertainment should be on your screen right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and I, I'm watching it on the Artisan DVD. I don't know if there's a Blu-ray or not. Maybe there is. Oh, that's a, that's a good point. I haven't bothered to look at that. So Turi Meyer, he's the director, and he also wrote part of this uh, screenplay. Oh, my! I think my audio is too loud. I'm going to turn it down. They... Uh Really, a big thing missing from this film was a uh, some a good soundtrack. I didn't. I thought that was a big thing of the Candyman films, and this film didn't have a yeah a very effective soundtrack. I think Philip Glass's, like I said, Philip Glass's music. Uh, I made a blog post on the podcast page, and I think Philip Glass's music is probably fifty well, percent of why the first Candyman or just Candyman films in general are effective. I forgot that they open right. with this weird dream sequence, and then they go to the opening credits. I always yeah. wondered if she opened a door, she might find a uh, detective Thorn from Hellraiser. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, it kind yeah. of does resemble. Well, and um, do you think that these dream sequences, because there are a few of them, do you think that they're put in here as filler just to um, to pad out the movie length? Probably try to beef up the suspense, yeah. I guess a little bit. They try to introduce some elements that, you know, would yeah pay off uh, earlier, uh, later down in the movie, like... Like sweets for the sweet on the wall or something like that. Yeah. Well, and and then of course we le- I guess we do learn about the bathtub later on and her mother and stuff. Also, it gives a great excuse for her to walk into the bathroom wearing nothing but panties and a tank top. Yeah. Because she's Donna Derrico. She is an American actress and model, Playmate of the Month for September 1995. And she had a starring role on the television series Baywatch between yeah. 1996 and 1998. Funny things that I found out about her is that, one, she owned the limo service company in Las Vegas before posing for Playboy. Two, she was a host for a while of BattleBots, which, you know, I mean, if, if you saw that, it used to be like these BattleBots just duking it out inside a small arena. It was pretty cool. <laughs> but the funny thing was, okay, so she was married to Nikki Six. Yeah. For a while. And Molly then... Yeah, and then she she declared bankruptcy eventually um, mm-hmm. in the 2000s, and she also did a Kickstarter to go look for Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat, and she went over there, and then she had like some sort of bad fall near the top, so she never even made it to the top. Ooh! But yeah, she oh. she became a really devout Catholic um, in the 2000s, and wow. she claimed in an interview that she prayed the rosary with her kids every night. To make up for you know a wildlife, I guess. So there you go. That's Donna Derrico. I didn't know all that stuff. Huh. Yep. 
Yeah, I wonder if she was a drug addict because it seems like a lot of that, you know, a lot of that people get super religious to get out of, you know, to help them That's recover. A good point. Yeah. So, uh, actually, so the, yeah, yeah, you were talking about the music, like Philip Glass, and this music is by Adam Gorgoni. Yeah, it, and it sounds to me like just a generic, like, thriller movie soundtrack. Like a TV soundtrack. Yeah, and it, mm-hmm. and it doesn't even, it that doesn't, it doesn't even really fit with the movie. It seems like it yeah. was made independently of the film, almost. Hmm. It does not. I'm not sure. Right. But I don't, you know, I don't know that. It feels but, out of place. Yeah. It's a good. It's a cool opening, though. I mean, the 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 credits are rolling while we see the, you know, Candyman's hook. It so. reminded me of James Bond. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to agree or disagree. Yeah. This movie uh, yeah. had a 13 percent score on Rotten Tomatoes. Tony <laughs> Todd. Did you see that? Tony yeah, Todd Tony was Todd. a co-producer. Oh, producer, yeah. Uh, this movie has a 13 percent score on Rotten Tomatoes and, and was the first Candyman to go straight to video. It was released in France, though. Uh, oh, really? Wow. Yes, it was actually released in France. So, yeah, I saw on your note that you put it France. That doesn't mean it was filmed in France, though. No, it was just okay. released uh, theatrically. Okay, I was going to say, how did they spend so much time dressing up France to look like Southern California? <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, and Ernie Hudson Jr., the son of actor Ernie Hudson, one of the, you know, the, I was the black Ghostbuster. I have, yeah. like, had to be his son or something. Yeah, he's an actor and producer known for The Wrecking Crew in 2000, Corrupt in 1999, and Candyman, Day of the Dead. So so he's the good cop in this movie? Yeah. I'll say yeah. so, yeah. Okay. Well, exactly. I had no idea. I hope he gets better breaks than this movie. He, maybe he has. I didn't even look in his the rest of his filmography. And director Tree Meyer was mostly famous for The Vampire Diaries and Smallville. Oh, I've never, I've never, I've never really watched any of that stuff. I, I've probably seen part of know, an episode I, I, of Smallville, but he did. I've, I've seen the. He did a film called Sleep Soccer or something like that, and he he did Leprechaun Two, I believe. They oh, did the, okay. Him and it, so this is like a him and a. There's another guy co-wrote the film. They're like a team. They work mm. together. It's Al. His name's Al uh, Sepatine, and they, uh, you know, worked on this. They, uh, oh yeah, co-wrote, yeah. Co-wrote, so she's a, she's an artist, like a sketch artist, right? Is she also a painter? Yeah, apparently. and and the paintings that she has in the gallery though are like her family's paintings that Daniel Robitaille did. Because she's the this is the daughter from part yeah two, right yeah so she grew up like twenty years in just a couple of years <laughs> I know. this would be like deep in the future <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> she, she played is Carolyn McKeever the great great granddaughter to Daniel Robitaille yeah and Carolyn was the little girl that had the mirror mobile at the end of Candyman too oh yeah that's right because the mother that she keeps seeing is the character from part two that yeah it's chasing. And the actress that played that mother is a completely different person in this movie than she was in Katie yeah. Man too. She looked more like the grandmother. Funny thing is Virginia Madsen is on Instagram, and I, I've been following her for a while. It's at Virginia Madsen on mm-hmm. Instagram. And she's she's doing pretty well. She still looks pretty good. And, you know, she, she is in Joy, the new movie. She plays Jennifer Lawrence's mother huh. in Joy. So. Cool. Yeah. And a, a little bit of trivia here. This this takes place, of course, in East Los Angeles. And uh, shortly before the production began, and this is from IMDb, Artisan discovered that Sony, who distributed the first film in the U.S., had legal rights to any sequel. Someone in the legal department had not checked, but, and this is the, the funny part, luckily for them, Sony passed on any involvement and the film was free to go on. <laughs> so not even Sony wanted to be a part of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they did some research yeah. to see if people were interested in the Candyman sequel, and nobody, you know, gave a rat's ass, apparently. Yeah. So this is a weird misdirection here with this guy. Uh, Tino. Yeah, because it's kind of like, oh, she looks back and he disappeared. Well, it's yeah. going to happen in a minute here, but but it's kind of like, what's that about? He's not some supernatural. He's just some guy that's like that knows everybody. Yeah, yeah. He's like the the Mister Fixit of the neighborhood, I guess. Yeah. 
So we discussed Candyman 2 and 3 on episode 51 of the Barker cast, so uh, go check it out. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll probably have a lot of the same complaints today that we had then. You titled that episode The Candyman's. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> instead of the candy man but uh that, that's that's a funny episode oh yeah t- tony todd in 2005 tony todd talked about the possibility of doing a candy man 4 and so uh, i think do you guys want to hear what he had to say about that sure yeah sure okay so this was in 2005 for movie hole and uh, Tony Todd, best known as the Be Adorned Candyman from three popular films bearing the same title, tells Fangoria that a Candyman 4 is likely to be a two-hander, teaming the towering assassin with another comic book favorite. And then this is the quote from, from Tony Todd. It's a versus film. I don't know if it's going to be Chucky or who. Todd laughs and continues. If it's Chucky, I'm just going to... He makes a kicking motion and offers a wide smile. So, um, and then the, the guy finished the article saying, since they're from Rival Studios, I can't imagine Chucky doing time with Candyman, but anything's possible. I guess it wasn't, because that never happened. That sounds horrible. I know. Yeah, that doesn't work at all. I mean, a lot of people want to put Chucky yeah. with people. I mean, so, with, want to do that for Freddy, but yeah. In our podcast episode, we talked a little bit about this, but Daniel Robitaille's paintings look like photographs. That's what I oh, noticed, yeah. too. Yeah. I was like, you know, they don't look like old paintings from, like, you know, that period. They just look like digital Yeah, I think they're photographs, they're photographs they with... To make it look like... Yeah, that. with, like, an Instagram filter on them. Yep. I had at 8 minutes, 40 seconds, my notes said, that painting looks like a photo. So, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. the one of Daniel Robitaille. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. It's so obvious. And nobody would be able to do a self-portrait that's that realistic. Yeah, so this guy, Miguel, he's supposed to be, like, the the owner of the gallery, I think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're setting up a, a, an exhibit of Daniel Robitaille's paintings. And he's somehow, he's coming so at it with, a, like, a Candyman angle to get people to come in, and she hates it because her mother told her never, you know, never acknowledge the, the Candyman yes. myth. Because you take away his power if people don't talk about it or if you doubt it but actually it seems like every time you doubt it it makes it worse so i think her mom gave her bad advice i think uh there's a there's a sequence here they kind of mir- you kind of cut out there for a, a second bit what happens in Candyman 2 the um helen's helen's tutor or what do you call it advisor helen's advisor wrote a book about Candyman after after the events of the first one yeah and so he was doing a press conference or doing a lecture, and he brings out this book with a mirrored dust jacket about the Candyman. And yeah. he, he, he says the words Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. And then in front of this screen where he was projecting some slides, and then someone, like, tears a hook through it, and it's, it's right in the first few minutes of the movie. Yeah. And yeah. something similar kind of happens here because there's going to be the, the exhibit, and there's going to be a mirror, and yeah. someone's going to say the words, and you're going to see. Something similar but not as good. Yeah. And this this cop is so one dimensionally racist, unsympathetic. Mm-hmm. What was <laughs> yeah. his name? The Detective Kraft. Yeah, Kraft. He had some of the worst lines in this movie. Yeah, and, 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 and his part, partner is like nothing. He's yeah, just a no. cardboard stand-in. Yeah. The girl that just passed there, she actually starred in uh, Showgirls. Oh, the oh, her, yeah. her, right there, this girl. Oh, right her. There, she was one of the. And she oh. starred. She wrote and directed the Showgirl sequel. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. I did not know that. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And so uh, we missed uh, like ten seconds ago. One of the guys was t- was saying to a girl, "What's blood for if not for shedding?" That's a quote yeah. from the first Candyman. Yeah. Guy, yeah. Yeah. They're Candyman groupies, and somehow they've seen the first Candyman movie, or, or, yeah. or maybe they've read <laughs> yeah, the book. Because it's also a it's also a quote from the um, the Forbidden. Uh huh. Okay. And so here's more more expositionary flashback. We've seen most of this before, like the story yeah, of Daniel just... Robitaille in the second movie. I know. But this scene, it's more about showing nudity and showing the romance between like, uh, yeah. Daniel and uh, kinda yeah. Red shoe diaries, kind of. Yeah, yeah, Still it really does. Kind of sleazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, and they're yeah. they're obviously trying to humanize Candyman, but I think they did a worse job than the first two movies. Mm. Yeah. 
And uh, and then they, they show a little bit of his death that we've not only seen this in Candyman two, but they've made it different here. It, so, yeah, and Candyman two did it better. Yeah, I think so too. Better. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, as as far it's as funny. the paintings go, they're you know, like you said, <laughs> that's look photograph like pictures, <laughs> you know, hyper hyper realist paintings. Yeah, or paintings Added that were some just grain to it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, printed on a canvas or something. Yeah. And there's there's uh, Daniel Robitaille meeting his fate. Yeah. Well, and and they didn't have the supernatural bee cloud coming at him like in Candyman too. They just, just are like, oh yeah, and the tree was filled with bees. Yeah. Which is okay too, except it looked you know it was close up shots because it to make it cheaper. It looked like a set. Yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and in Candyman 2, you could see it was out in a field on a yeah, tree were... with all the people all around. And this was like a close-up of his face so that they didn't have to spend all that money doing that. And the I don't know what kid. the budget was for this, but I'd say it was probably under under $5 million. It wasn't very... They didn't invest a lot of money into it. Well, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. So, um... So the, in this, do they believe that the murders were caused by a ghost? I mean, w- weren't the crimes supposedly framed on Helen in the first movie? Yeah, and then and then in the second movie, it's uh, the aunt, Annie. Is that her name? Annie kind of, Durant. Yeah, Durant or something. Yeah. All right. So here's where where uh, the great granddaughter comes in and says, well, you know, he was just a guy, you know. Yeah. Remember that he was a nice guy and he got and he was a good painter. Behind her, look at that old man with the glasses and the cigar. I don't know if if you're blocking them now. Yeah, they're like, we need a bunch of stereotypical rich people to be in the Uh, audience. Art, you know, collectors. Yeah. It's like a mixture between like a, a classy galleria, but then they have these like these these blood scrawlings on the mirror, like say his name, and it's like it's so hokey. And some parts of the uh, of the gallery kind of look like it's unfinished. Mm-hmm. They look like a backstage somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So she's so, saying his name. Yeah, so she's calling him here because she's doubting him. and But then Candyman kills everybody around her except her. Well, kind of like the first movie. Yeah. But I thought in the first movie he mostly killed people that that said his name. And this is... Um, he was in Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, his name's Nick. Uh, That's right. He was. Like, oh, was he? Third one? Was he the third one? I can't pronounce his uh, name. Is. Uh, oh, I have Garcia. it right here in my notes. Yeah, J- Jesus Garcia. Yeah. Jesus spelled J S U. Yeah, his name is Jesus yeah. Garcia as David de la Paz. So I still can't believe that that girl back there. She wrote. The showgirls too. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, go look that up. It's an interesting story. <laughs> She's trying to make sure she stays in the shot as much as possible. Yeah. Also, boobs. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Coming up. Well, the first time I saw this movie, this guy showing up again, I really, I really thought that he was crazy. And then it's like when I saw what they did here, I was like, you know what? That's pretty funny. Uh, it's. Uh, like the part where they said, "Hey, he was just an actor, and this was all to cause some drama and tension." So yeah, he actually does a good job. The, the guy that was from Not Elm Street, he does a good job in the movie. I like yeah. his character. He's a father, you know. Him and the guy who plays Miguel, they did a good job. Yeah, yeah, and also his uh, his grandmother. We talked about this in the podcast. Um, she was probably the best character in the movie. But I'm going to go on record saying I don't know if this is blasphemy, but I, I thought Tony Todd was pretty weak in this movie. Yeah. yeah I, don't think th- I don't think he got very good uh, lines to deliver in this. Well, yeah. Just and, and just there, it just sounds like he's like just he's... spouting out. Yeah. yeah. It's like, very yeah, weird. and a lot of it is just rehashing stuff he said in the other two movies. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I blame so the writers. I, so I can't really blame that on him, I guess. He probably was just like doing this kind of sleepwalking, yeah. this, this, you know. Yeah, and so. Oh, man, the LA subway looks like a dump. <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah. supposed to be the subway now? It yeah. looks like a, it's an abandoned subway. Yeah. Why don't you so go down there? Why don't yeah. you go down there by yourself? So, if anybody I mean, ever was wondering what a Baywatch Candyman crossover would be like, this is it. it. Yeah. So I like the uh, the bees effect that's going to appear here. Candyman's appearance, you know, the the entrance in the movie. I think it's pretty effective. Yeah. Especially the way that he's like floating. Yeah, those the, that does look cool in here. Like amidst the does bees. Does he form? He form. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Is, so cool. is he? He's floating through the air in the bees. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they slightly changed his costume, though. Like yeah. The jacket. Yeah, it's more I, black now. You weren't content with the jacket that I wore in the first two movies, so I was obliged to change my wardrobe. Yep. I liked uh, my favorite look was from the second one. It's yeah. funny this uh this figure they made a Todd McFarlane made a figure of Candyman and they based it on this particular outfit. Oh really? Cool. Yeah, he's got like this fancy dress code in this one. I I really liked the sort of tattered, messed up looking one in the first one. Mm-hmm. And it was it was it was a lot of red on it. Yeah. So uh, Rob, you you wrote a a retro review, or rather a review for Candyman: Farewell to the Flesh. Yes. Um, one of my first. Oh wait, that's the second was. one. Yeah, that's the second movie. Yeah, you you posted it on January 2015, so it's it's been a year. You gave that a seven out of ten. Yeah, it was uh, the Blu-ray. As far I think as this movie I would give it a 5 out of 10. I would even go lower. I mean, I think the parts of Probably. it that are okay are just a rip off of the second movie. So they based it around Day of the Dead instead of um in- Mardi Gras. instead of Mardi Gras. Mm-hmm. And, you know, spoilers, if you want to get rid of Candyman, you have to break his stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, the second movie, it's breaking a mirror that has his soul. Yeah. Somehow that wasn't enough, and now here you have to, I guess... You have to burn meant, his paintings. I guess they meant that as a way to erase his the marks of his existence in the physical world, I yeah. guess. But the, the news and the myth, I think, is really hard to erase because it would be like... It's like... Candyman went viral, you know? Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's part of the culture now, like mm-hmm. Freddy Krueger. So it would be really yeah. hard to uh, for people to really forget about him. Well, and 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 also Candyman, the idea was he was sort of an uh, urban myth, and he was totally localized in in Chicago mm. in the first movie. And then you know, and then it's like they go to his origin, which is in New Orleans. Yeah, you know, and now here, I guess he just kind of followed the granddaughter. All right, or, yeah. honeycomb. Yeah, honeycomb. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say something. Again, there's no reason to sh- show us what happened except to do bad exposition flashbacks. Because Caroline, yeah. I don't think she's doing any kind of investigating here. I mean, she sees the 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 clothes on the ground, but there's no way she can know that the girl was smearing honey all over her body. It's just it's just for the the audience's sake. That's true because this is this uh, this is all flashback because it already happened. Right. Right. Yeah, and so you it's have it's played this as its own scene. It's yeah, because it's yeah. this is kind of bad editing or something, right? Yeah. I agree, Rob. You just said something amazing. They should have put this before. Uh, they should have put this. Well, where where could they put this scene? I mean, she's in the subway, then she wakes up in a park bench somehow. Yeah, and that, that's another part that I was like, so a blonde playmate spent the night in a park bench in L.A. and nothing happened. It's like. Yeah. It's hard to understand. And she wakes up in front of Miguel's house. So it's implied that Candyman took her there. Yeah. 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 It's true. <laughs> and Miguel here is, like, completely helpless. Yeah. Well, it would be hard, though, because it's like, do I try to help her? Do I run out the door? Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw a picture at the old Gary Tunnicliffe uh, website because the special effects were done by Gary J. Tunnicliffe and Two Hours in the Dark. And he had a picture of this girl with the with the fake bees glued to her face, and then oh, they in weren't blood. real. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, I, I I don't like that there was no sound effect for the stabbing the hook into him. So mm-hmm. it's like you look down, it's like oh the hook's already all the way through. Okay, well, 
you didn't didn't hear that. Power to there's no power to that. Yeah, usually when a Candyman makes his first kind of real entrance to a kill. Remember in uh, the part two when he she he killed Anne's uh, psychiatrist. No husband. Oh yeah. Oh, in part two. Yeah, I was thinking the psychiatrist in the first one too. That was that scene that just happened was kind of a play off of that. Yeah. Where he just comes up behind. So we've hit the absolute limit of her acting skills is is like smoking and shaking. Yeah. Yeah. She does that uh, two or three times in the movie. Yeah. It's funny. Tony Todd is the one that really labored. For this movie to get made, and he got the team together, and he was a co-producer. Uh, yeah, he, he yeah. can't stand the movie now. <laughs> Ernie Hudson Jr. Up. Oh wow! Yeah, oh yeah. He, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't look a whole light, lot like him. I, I guess you would never know that hey, by looking at Jamal. Him. Just call the, your call your dad and the Ghostbusters, and they'll they'll trap like Candyman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but exactly. <laughs> hey, that's a good verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah Candyman Candy versus Man the Ghostbusters. Like. Yeah, that that would be funny. <laughs> and you know, pretty soon the I don't know the, where they could take it if they did a Candyman four. I don't know where they could take it. It's really just a, it's like Jason and yeah. all that stuff. There's nothing. There's it, every nothing horror really movie good. doesn't have to be a series of ten movies or yeah. whatever. They can at this mo- at this time. I'm not really like a big reboot fan, but at this time, I think that the best thing for Candyman, and this is just my strictly personal opinion, would be to like reboot it to be closer to the forbidden, to be like set it in instead, London. Instead of being a guy who actually existed, like a painter, they should yeah. make it like he's pure rumor that takes physical form because enough people believe mm-hmm. in him. That's exactly. the magic of the first story. Um, that's you know, one of my I mean, favorite. Uh, yeah, they they could call it like the Forbidden, and then you know, in parentheses, the Candyman or something like that. Yeah, just I, to uh, tie it together so people know what they're. You know, I do like the backstory they came up with with Daniel Robitaille and stuff like that. Yeah, I do it, like that story. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I would like to see something a little closer to. I yeah, I agree. I was gonna, I was about to disagree until you said you know, make it closer to the. The, um, but otherwise, yeah, if they're not going to do that, I would just say just let it stop. I think it, it was a mistake to make this movie, and they should have just stopped, stopped at two. number two, which was yeah. a high point. Mm-hmm. And I then here's all number two in the theaters, and it was a good crowd, and everybody seemed to enjoy it. So this actor who plays this de- detective, his name is Wade, um, what was his name, Wade Williamson? Williams. Williams. Williams, yeah, yeah. Of course, There's he starts off by voice work. Yeah, yeah. He starts off by being racist towards Detective Jamal, saying, "Go through some hoops." Yeah, some hoops. that's going to have a payoff later in the movie. Yeah. So he's got this one line exchange his character later in the movie. It's like, yeah, I got this from Internet Movie Database. He's like, they take my shield for one little fuck up, pounds his locker door. Yeah, Lieutenant, he's like, one little fuck up, storms off. Jamal Matthews listens close by shaking his head. Oh well, I'll show them. I'll show those fucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's, yeah, yeah. So here he plays Samuel Kraft. I, I, yeah. I'm guessing he's a detective, but you know. So why did Candyman dump her off in a park bench? He got can, tired can, and just didn't want to. Yeah. Got sick of carrying her. Yeah. <laughs> just like, it's like I need yeah. a break. Oh, this is close enough. You just we'll put put you here. So this this so, is another thing. This is the cheapest police car. It is. I know. Brown. It's a brown <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it doesn't. It doesn't even look good for like a. You know, it's fine if de- detectives have an unmarked car. That makes sense. But this is a cheap piece of crap. I know. It even looks, in 1999, it looks, nice. it looks like a, a an early 80s car. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a collector's car like, that's yeah. like 30 years old or something. Yeah. But so I was going to ask: Is that yellow sky like an Instagram filter or just LA smog? Because when oh, they show yeah. the gallery building. Like the the sky is completely orange. You know that looks like yeah, and that's another thing. It it the, this um, looks so much like a TV movie, and and uh, the atmosphere is gone. Like most of the movie takes place in the daytime, which yeah, is not right. you know how Candyman right. usually There's no works. Night scenes really. Yeah. 
It's a good point. And also, one of the things that, now that you brought up the feeling of being oh, a Oh, yeah, you're a right. That film. is like a filter or something. That doesn't... Yeah, that like looks horrible. Filter. So, uh, so I was, her apartment I was is in like an abandoned quick, warehouse. One of the things that makes me think of TV is the fact that the movie's interspersed with voice-off narrations by, by Candyman. And sometimes I don't understand, is, is Caroline listening to these or is this just being put in there to pad the movie just to, to do some exposition, exposition dialogue like, oh, yeah. you know. This, you By know, the this way, everybody, Man this is a Candyman movie. Don't yeah. forget, it's not Baywatch. Right. So I guess that beam materialized inside that light bulb there. <laughs> yeah. Help me. And then he made the light explode. With his B like powers, that. we're such cheap uh, scares. I mean, they're, they're just they're trying yeah. desperately to find any way to kind of get some kind of yeah suspense oh, man. or anything. But there's no suspense in something like that. It, the really bad cheap scare is the one that's coming up right now. Yeah, I was like, I, when I, when I saw oh, the yeah. scene, I was like, seriously, they did that? That's yeah, like, oh. yeah, yeah. And there were jump scares even in the first Candyman, but this isn't a jump scare. It's just a it's a terrible, terrible setup. It's a deliberate. Attempt yeah. to trick the audience. Yeah, the joke's on you, viewers. It's it's like a Family Guy joke or something. <laughs> oh no, I'm coming to help! And she keeps screaming and screaming and screaming. Yeah. At first I was thinking, wow, that's the longest Candyman kill yet. Because she keeps screaming and screaming. Yeah. Just... Other people just like, blood comes out of their mouth and that's it. She's like, oh, I got the part. It's a horror movie. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's great. Let me just uh, sit down and shake for another ten minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, she really is. I guess it yeah. triggers her PTSD because yeah. you know here she's in the shower, like sobbing her eyes off. Yeah. And thinking about her mother's suicide for some reason. And Miguel it's just to tell us that you know yeah. her mom killed herself. And to put her into the bathtub or shower, which is you know she spends half the movie coming out of the bathtub or. Yeah. With her un- but, just her underwear on, yeah, like right now. She wears the same underwear all the time in the shirt. Yeah, yeah shirt sure, with I no yeah with no bra. A little cheaper. Yeah, and it's the same outfit she has in the beginning. In the yeah, yeah. she 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 really likes it. I guess. Yeah. If I got blood all over my shirt, you know, coming in on my mother who had committed suicide, I'd probably never wear that shirt again. Uh, yeah, but uh, so here she is, and I was going to say that the whoever did the wardrobe for this, they just she spends most of her uh, most of the action scenes in the movie when once the story picks up. All she wears is mom jeans and a white tank top. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's felt, like, oh. they could have found something a little more interesting for her to put yeah. on. I mean, the, the just mom jeans and a white top. She also doesn't like pants. Her, <laughs> friend, her friend, I just realized, I never thought of this, but it looks like, she looks like Bernadette from the first film. Hmm. A little bit. You know, I thought maybe that was kind of another ripoff. Yeah, yeah, Alexia Robinson plays Tamara. She reminds me a lot of Helen's friend Bernadette. Yeah. It's like a, another little yeah. nod to the first movie, I guess. That woman kind of does look like the an older version of Anne Tarrant. I thought she kind of looked more like the... Cause she's, she's got this, this southern accent that, that Annie didn't have. Mm. Yeah, and she she kind of acts more like the grandmother from the second movie, or or the the I guess who would be her grandmother, Veronica Cartwright. Yeah, yeah. She just she just said the wisest thing anyone's ever said in this movie. Like, What'd she say? That, that you got to forget about him. That you got to destroy the myth. Yeah. Well, and that's what Annie's brother was doing. And the second one. Yeah, he was trying to stop the book signing tour and. Tell everybody to stop talking about Candyman. He was even willing to go to jail for the murders just so people wouldn't think it was the Candyman. Just, yeah. It was just that guy. Yeah. He was really committed. There are a few slow moments in this movie, and this is kind of one of those. Yeah. She, she does a good job, I guess. Except her, her death scene... Alexia Robinson's death scene is a little funny because of the faces she does when Candyman kills her. Oh, yeah. Is that right now or no, that's later? That's later. Yeah. 
here's this reminds little... me this reminds me of the drawings the little kid does in and Candyman too. So what does she do for a living? Is she just an artist? Because I mean, selling some, yeah, selling her grandfather's paintings isn't a job. Oh yeah, that's right. I just realized that when they did the exhibit, I'm guessing they were trying to sell the paintings, right? You would think so, huh? She actually has something to do with that Herbums. gallery. Yeah, I would say. So he was he the um, he was the boyfriend that got killed in the first Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Yeah, he the got one that hung himself in the or he looked like he hung himself in jail. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. also had a small part in Predator too. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it was very small. One of the one of the gang members, the Colombian gang members. No, it was just, it was actually a just a really basically just a nothing role. There's a pan shot as they're going. To, they're in the police station, and you see him talking to some prostitutes. Oh, okay. okay. That's, it. That's the amount of his role. Now, if he had a bigger part that got cut, I have no idea. Huh. But that's what I, was, I learned that on the Internet Movie Database. Wow. There's a funny thing here where he says, the word on the street is that, you know... Don't sit on my gang. table. <laughs> Don't sit on my table. I keep saying that to my cat all the time. Um, <laughs> one of the things this guy says is the word on the street is that uh, there was this gang that took all the paintings. And I'm wondering, how come the police doesn't know about this? Yeah. You know, I mean... Well, yeah, you would think that would be the first thing he would tell them. Right, exactly. Hey, I heard on the street that there's this gang that, you know, the, the, the Hot Topic Brigade took all of the paintings. But, hey, you know, the guy who wrote this movie was like, well, these two have to pair up, so let's have them investigate this gang instead yeah. of telling the police. I mean, she, she, she's traumatized. She just spent like an hour sobbing in the shower. She saw her friends get murdered bodies. Yeah. And it's like now she's ready to investigate. Let's go. And this is so hokey right here. He's like, he feels totally betrayed because she's hanging out with... with <laughs> yeah, the, the better He cop. brought her roses. Yeah, he brought her roses and he throws them on the street. He's throwing a, he's throwing a little total fish. He is the most pathetic... Oh, yeah, and you got to gotta drink and drive, too. That's important. Yeah. Make sure to cover all your bases to make everybody hate him. Yeah. Don't put on your seatbelt, either. Delete, go seatbeltless. But but he, he does... He does bad cop. He does the bad character like really well. This guy always yeah. plays like bad characters. <laughs> but you want to see him get it, off. It, I, it's too much in this movie. I think we could have done with a thirty uh, percent less bad cop. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, once again, this is in Los Angeles, just so people know. What? And that that tin thing, that that shack over there. Yeah. And it's like they talk about it. It's they a, say that a, a place of evil, a little girl got killed there. Yeah. I'm like, so why is it st- still standing at all? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a shack. Kind of, yeah. yeah, it's just a shack. And is that supposed to be some kind of like homage to the first film with a candy man with his out, mouth open? Yeah, well, and it looks like it's on public property. Well, it yeah. was Miguel had someone tag it and paint the candy man face to promote the gallery. Film. Yeah. And here Everything we go. looks like a set in this movie. This this bar looks like a set. Look. Oh, I mean this bar here. Yeah, it looks like a set. Sure, it probably is. I'm not saying it is, but it just the way it's or, shot. The yeah, they, there's a, they, they close up on on people constantly in this movie instead of wide shots. And Tino is played by Mike Moroff. He was in some pretty awesome movies like Desperado, Scarface, mm. from Dust Till uh, Dawn. From, from Till Dawn, right? Airwolf. Oh, yeah. Airwolf. <laughs> Airwolf. <laughs> Re- Return that of the TV Living series? Dead 3. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Return, Return of the Living Dead, Dead 3. 3, wasn't that? I he haven't seen that since it came out. Oh, he has a lot of, like, IMDb credits. He's been in a lot of stuff. So he's, she's a waitress, right? This lady? I don't I know. I guess. Waitress slash flower girl. She's she's definitely trying to get her to go away from the balcony. I mean, from the bar. Yeah. And she's really like being inconvenient there. Yeah. So. The bathroom scene. Yeah. We, in 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 a Candyman movie, don't ever go into a public bathroom and look in the mirror. Yeah. You know, it just hit me. She's in like three or four different bathrooms in this movie. Yeah. I don't know. 
A- actually, when when um, when De La Paz disappears, and she goes to his grandmother's house, and she knocks on the door, bum 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 bum. It's like abuela, abuela, and then the first thing she does when the abuela opens the door is like, "Can I use your bathroom?" Yeah. <laughs> Here's Candyman again. In Candyman is your destiny. Yeah. He's got a thing for public bathrooms. And is she barefoot in here? Yeah, what is she doing? What? Where no, are your shoes? She's seeing her mother, I think, here. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It's like, hey, 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 girl, it's me again. Just making sure you know I'm still dead. And yeah. She gets her neck sliced open in this movie like three or four times as well. Okay. Yeah. Tony Todd lost some of his hearing when making this movie. Yeah. Oh, from her screaming? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's creepy. really high pitched. Yeah. This this shot of the mom. Black eyes like that are yeah. It's this really is, creepy. That is well done. I think that. I agree with you. But the I mean the the yeah, I Annie like Tarrant was a cool Inferno vibe. Annie Tarrant was a cool character in Hellraiser, I mean, in Candyman 2, but in this movie, she's kind of, I don't know, she's kind of weak. I think it's not supposed to be her spirit or her ghost. It's just supposed to be like this vision that Candyman is using to scare her. I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I mean, even in her flashbacks of, you know, just that actress and I don't know, she doesn't look anything like her. She's more of a caricature of a Southern person. And meanwhile, this part's going to be a little slow, so I got something funny to say. When you go to Clyde Barker Info, there's a page on Candyman 3, Day of the Dead. And here is what the um, movie director had to say. So Turi Meyer said, this is a great franchise. It's a great actor playing a monster and an opportunity to play with the Clyde Barker-created eeriness and his quirky way of working with horror. I would love to have had him, Barker, involved, and I'm dying to hear what he thinks. I hope that he'll be happy. <laughs> this is from Fangoria number 183. Yeah. Yeah. And then here's what Clyde Barker had to say about Candyman 3 in Confessions to Lost Souls newsletter on January 1999. He says, Candyman 3, which I had nothing to do with, was shown to me a couple of weeks ago. I declined to put my name on it. I really don't think I contributed anything to its creation, and it seems entirely phony to plunk your name on it, take the money, and run. I didn't think it was a badly created movie. I just didn't think it had anything to do with the mythology I originally created. I would have felt like a big old fake. So there wow. You go. I think he was just trying to say we won't. Well, he was polite was about it, at movie, least. Yeah. Being nice about it. Yeah, he was a lot nicer to that than he was to Hellraiser Revelations. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And Tony Uh, Todd had to say that the relationship has deepened between my ancestral pursuit of, in this case, my great-great-great-granddaughter and the very strong story Turi has written about why this person was created. It really explores the horrors of what happens. The strong point of view and purpose in life, it's a story about the making of a monster, and that's very clear this time. Again, this was Fangoria 183, June 1999. Yeah. Uh, Okay, I understand the need the actors have to protect, you know, the projects that they're in. Uh, Of course, they're not going to say, I'm in this movie, I'm the main character, I'm horrible. Or, you know, the movie's horrible, but I'm okay. Nobody's going to say that. that Yeah, either they don't talk to the press at all, or they say nice things about it. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 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 filmmakers wanted to get this film so back, you, you know, to the roots. Uh, how would y'all, uh, you know, uh, do you think they accomplished anything of that getting no. close back to the series roots? No, I mean, it, it, yeah, I guess it's true if you don't understand the roots of Candyman. You, they, I mean, I believe that they they think that, but that's an interesting question. I don't think it adds mm, anything. To the to franchise, like like Ryan said, I think it would have been best if they had just left it at two. Yeah. Um, second Candyman was pretty successful. I'm looking at box office mojo uh, results for Candyman and Candyman Farewell to the Flesh. The first one did a lifetime gross of twenty five million seven hundred ninety two dollars, wow. approximately. Um, That's really good for a horror movie. 
but but on the opening, yeah, but on the on the theatrical opening, the first Candyman did five point four million dollars, and the second one did six point zero four million dollars. So the second yeah. one had a better opening in the theaters than the first one. It well, people knew what they were getting into because it was a it wasn't a brand new thing anymore. Maybe yeah. As for this one, who went straight to video in places like America, the UK, Australia, you know, apparently in France, it it had a theatrical opening, but. Um, I would guess that, you know, it didn't make nearly as much money as this, so... I mean, I don't know how much money it made in France. Yeah, it's kind of hard to compare with a direct-to-video movie, too. Yeah. This was uh, released along... uh, They also did a uh, Wishmaster sequel. This was like a package deal or something like that, that... They make a Candyman sequel and a Wishmaster sequel. Oh. Wishmaster mm. uh, 2. I can't remember the huh. name of that. It's some kind of subtitle. Okay. Peter I, think, I, I, I need to get into the other Wishmasters and see how they turned out because... I think I'm, I've I'm only really I've only seen one. the first one. Yeah. No, you don't, need to, you don't need to see him. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> to be honest. It just... You know. um, another uh, little bit of trivia. The revenue for all three Candyman... Has been approximately thirty nine million seven hundred thirty two dollars. Huh? It's not, not bad. bad. That's yeah. Fair. These are ni- this is a niche film, so I mean that's not bad. They they got like five dollars when I bought this DVD. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Actually, my 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 Candyman three DVD is is autographed by Tony Todd. Oh, that's cool. That makes it. You know, that's good. I'm glad that. Okay. You know, where did you yeah. meet him at that the first monster? Yeah, Mad Monster Party. Mad Monster Party, yeah. There's going to be a Mad Monster uh, Phoenix, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be in May, and so far they don't really have many guests confirmed yet. So I'm I'm looking forward to that one. Oh yeah, so, that would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I like this character, the abuela, the abuelita, yeah, the grandma. Yeah, so at first I thought she was Cuban because of the cigar, but then I realized no, this is all Mexican because it's Dia de los Muertos. And yeah. All that, so. I really yeah. didn't. This is when I first saw the movie on HBO. I was watching it. I kind of just knew the film was just. I was like, I lost interest because I didn't get. They're trying to build some kind of scary scene around a a uh, an egg. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and shoot the blood out of it. It's just. I mean, I was like, this movie's just bad. Yeah. yeah. The, the, but there is there is a certain tradition of using eggs as a way to ward oh, uh, off bad yeah. spirits. Um, it's it's but not it's, just it's not just made for this movie. But I actually enjoy the scene where the bee comes out of the egg yolk. I thought that was that was that was cool. Um, it must have been yeah, hard to set up. It's just my opinion. And this woman, I think she looks familiar. Uh, the, the the actress that plays the grandma, I think I've seen her in another thing. I know that she was in As Good As It Gets. She was in The Goonies. Uh, so she was in a few oh. well-known movies. Yeah. Well, She's a character actress. She was in The Goonies. What'd she play in The Goonies? Well, I mean... Oh, I mean, wait a minute. That, that, uh, the, the, which I know you're talking about, yeah. Her the, name is uh, Lupe Ontiveros. And uh, so I'm going gonna, gonna to check out to see what she did on The Goonies for you. Rosaletta? The, the maid? I think that's probably you're right. That she did look familiar. Huh. I'm looking it up. Yeah, she plays Rosalita. Yeah, Rosalita. That's in the Goonies. <sighs> Again, the bad cop. Yeah. She's like, I didn't even realize that you were even interested in me. What is this coming from? Uh, yeah, it's like misplaced jealousy here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, so far, they've, they've spoken, like, once at a crime scene. <laughs> yeah. How romantic. Yeah. I guess he expected her to be turned on because he was so nice to her. Yeah. Know, in those earlier meetings. Now I'm going to go drink again. One of the things when when the uh, the abuela gives her the egg and says, "Say the name of the spirit that you want to," and she says, "Candyman." I, I figured she would say Daniel Robitaille. That would have been better. Yeah. Although maybe maybe that's supposed to mean that she doesn't believe that uh, 
her great 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 grandfather is actually the Candyman. Or there's the so, duality of the the evil spirit versus the the yeah. good man that was her great grandfather. So again, now, this, this is one of those voice off things, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So this shed is like a TARDIS, right? I mean, I guess later on you you they they go in there and it's this huge yeah, space. They, yeah, it's where those uh, goth people are, aren't they? Yeah, they live in yeah. the shed. <laughs> <laughs> next door to a hot topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was always curious why did they put a bunch of goth people in the movie? I guess it was to try to attract a different audience. Yeah, and they showed up at the gallery. They so knew all the rich people. I don't know many goth people that hang out in East L.A. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. In East Good LA, point. But I, uh, this part here is also weird. Like, the, the tone of this scene is all weird. So, people have been dying, and now her friends died two days ago, and she's doing sh- tequila shots. Yeah. Uh, it's it's weird. Yeah, and she, but uh, up to this point, all she's been doing is shaking and not being able to deal with it, and now... They got candles on. There's yeah, and now she's hitting on him. Sitting on the couch. And and I'm not sure if, if the next scene is actually her dreaming or if they were actually, like, making out after a while. And I'm just like, that's weird. Yeah. He even puts the salt in her hand and licks it. And it's like, oh, how romantic. Yeah. Considering that, you know, you guys are supposed to be... He's he's afraid of being charged with murder. And she just had, like, friends, friends of her die. You know? Yeah. I don't know. It's just weird. I like that little skull. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The, I like the Day of the Dead uh, actual concept could have been pretty cool if it would have been, you know, played up, you know, right? I don't know. I mean, I think it's too close to the to the Mardi, Mardi Gras. Gras. Yeah. What do you think they could have done to set this apart from the other two to make it more? If you would approach a Candyman 3, how do you think they would have should have done this? Not uh, make it? Yeah, that, that, that's the only well, answer I could have. I, I think one of the things I would say is take it away from the bloodline aspect of it because, uh, you know, I, I'm not into that much. I don't understand why Candyman is so obsessed with his love with his uh, bloodline. Yeah. Cause, because... It was a little it's, bit of a stretch in the second movie, and now in this one, it's kind of nuts. And especially yeah. now, yeah, she's she's like, grown up twenty years in in like the few years, the couple of years since the last movie. Sure, I don't understand what's the obsession that Candyman has with his bloodline. I mean, not all of his does he only chase like his descendants that are thing. blonde, yeah. good-looking girls. Is that the only thing that he does? Like chase his descendants that are blonde, good-looking yeah. girls? Well, and and there's a lot of like incestuous sort of you know implications in this scene oh, yeah. here too coming up I, I just love the cheesy guitar playing Latin guitar like playing like something oh. like something yeah and and then all of a sudden here it comes it's no it's not Bill Cosby it's Tony Todd oh god oh. <laughs> <It's awful. laughs> I'm oh, sorry geez. that's okay that's, that's <laughs> horrible I just want to say that that's a horrible joke I'm sorry he was arrested, right? Yeah, he he was. he was yeah he was taken in and charged. Yeah. So if if coming up here in a second we're going to have an extended close up of Tony Todd's nose hair. 